Hello everyone, I'm Vern Friedlander from Bannister Lake. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar. Real-time data has never been more important. At a time when audiences rely on up to the second information, real-time data provides the very best opportunity for content producers to take advantage of every platform to disseminate vital news and information. And as our industry continues to change, more and more communications professionals are relying on streaming solutions to get information out. Today's webinar is going to bring those two concepts together. We'll have a look at Bannister Lake's Chameleon Data Management and Aggregation Solution and how it is used to ingest real-time data for editorial storytelling, branding, and for creating exciting new business opportunities. And we're also going to explore how Chameleon ties into the most popular streaming platforms on the market. This combination dramatically raises the production bar for anyone who streams content, bringing in more viewers who need to be kept informed and attracting more advertising and sponsorship opportunities. Before we begin, just a little bit of housekeeping. First, we have a quick internal anonymous poll to learn more about our webinar audience. We'd like to learn about which sectors of the industry you represent. So if you could please take a minute to answer this poll question, it's strictly anonymous for our internal purposes only and will not be shared. So what industry do you represent? Are you from broadcast, digital signage, cable, OTT streaming, events venue, or other? Okay, thank you. We welcome your questions about our Chameleon product and streaming integration. There will be an opportunity at the end of the presentation to answer any questions you may have. As you watch the presentation, please feel free to submit your questions using the Q&A tools on your screen. Simply type your question and submit. We will also be making a recording of this webinar available to you and posting it on our YouTube site. And that's youtube.com backslash Bannister Lake one, as in the number one. So let's begin. Here's our colleague, Bannister Lake's Vice President of Sales, Darcy Pickering. Welcome to today's Bannister Lake webinar, where we will be focusing on our flagship product, Chameleon, and how it can be integrated into a streaming or an over-the-top workflow. First, a bit of background on us. Bannister Lake is a Canadian software company that has been in operation since 1994. Though you may not recognize our name, you've likely seen some of our work. We work behind the scenes on large-scale broadcast projects, helping media companies aggregate and manage real-time data so they can be better storytellers, create more effective workflows, and launch new products and services. Real-time data seen by millions of viewers is used in news, sports, weather, elections, social media, and more. In today's world, real-time data has never been more important. Audiences everywhere are watching on every kind of device and relying on receiving the latest news and information because news is fluid, constantly changing, and being updated. Chameleon is a perfect solution to help you ensure your audience has the most up-to-date information, no matter the platform or device. Chameleon is a powerful web-based product that aggregates real-time data from a wide variety of automated and manual sources, including paid services such as news, weather, sports, financial news providers, or content directly from the newsroom or hyper-local content providers. All data ingested by Chameleon can be fully managed and moderated, allowing users to customize and create their own content output messaging. In addition to news content, Chameleon comes equipped with a branding component. This allows snipes, bugs, coming up boards, and sponsor logos to be managed, scheduled, and integrated into the broadcast. Chameleon provides full control over graphic assets, can read a program schedule to ensure that the right asset is associated with the right program, and can generate an as run logs for sales reconciliation. Ultimately, Chameleon is your complete one-stop solution for all your broadcast data needs. Beyond broadcast, Chameleon can also be used to manage real-time data for digital signage applications, web widgets, or intense data events such as esports or large-scale sports tournaments. The primary delivery mechanism for Chameleon is a graphic output. Graphic templates are populated with real-time content. However, Chameleon, as per its name, has the ability to aggregate and blend data and make it available to any data-thirsty system. Non-graphic devices that can read XML, RSS, or JSON can pull the aggregated and moderated content directly from Chameleon through Blade. Chameleon's RESTful API, Blade, is the ideal way for broadcasters to share data amongst various stations, even if they have different graphic engines and share data content with digital signage systems, 
websites, mobile applications, or on-set displays. Chameleon goes well beyond the broadcast market. Anywhere where real-time data is required to convey a story, Chameleon provides producers with enormous control over the editorial while providing management with new markets and business opportunities. From fully automated news and information channels to election coverage to new streaming services and OTT, Chameleon provides a complete data management solution. So let's talk about streaming and over the top. The broadcast world is changing quickly. More and more new channels are being launched that are delivered directly to viewers via the internet as over the top or OTT stream services. News channels are growing in popularity as consumers choose to cut their cable and internet quality continues to improve. At the same time, traditional broadcasters are launching stream channels, extending their brands into the OTT, online, and mobile sectors. Each of the US networks has launched a streaming news channel and broadcasters around the world are doing the same. Real-time data and graphics play a key role in the news workflow, but traditional and OTT news organizations each have unique differences. First, let's have a quick look at Chameleon and some of the data management features that are important for streaming applications. Chameleon is Bannister Lake's data aggregation and management solution that allows media organizations of any size drive all kinds of graphics populated with real-time data. Chameleon is used to create data-driven tickers using both manual and automated sources. And producers have full control over the content and are able to edit, blend, playlist, and schedule playout. These could contain any data source and are used across the broadcast industry for news and information. Chameleon is also used for on-air branding. From coming up boards to snipes and promos, Chameleon provides an easy way to control, schedule, and manage branding content. The solution can leverage automation, read program schedules, and generate ASRAN logs. Chameleon comes equipped with a powerful election solution. Producers can track and analyze election results, quickly create graphic playlists, and play them out to any endpoint. Chameleon can distribute election results for broadcast, social media, mobile applications, web pages, or on-set touchscreens, or augmented reality systems. Chameleon also has a powerful graphic design tool called Designer that is used to create templates and associate real-time data to templates. Designer can be used to create a wide variety of graphics, including tickers, lower thirds, L-bars, as well as complex election graphic templates. Chameleon has a robust RESTful API called Blade, which allows users to take data, reformat it into XML, JSON, or CSV, and redistribute it anywhere. It's a great way to create subsets of data and send it to different devices or destinations. Blade is an integral part of the Chameleon workflow and is used to launch new data-based services or make data available to digital signage systems, for example. Though both traditional broadcasters and OTT channels may share similar workflows when it comes to gathering data and share data management tools such as Bannister Lake's Chameleon, it is on the final output that they differ dramatically. A broadcaster would typically use SDI output to distribute their data, an OTT channel would use HTML5 since they are distributing online. Bannister Lake has developed an HTML5 web player for both tickers and elections to address the streaming and OTT market. Bannister Lake's Chameleon HTML5 web player provides similar functionality as a broadcast graphic engine, but is specifically designed for the web. Similarly, our Chameleon NDI player provides NDI output to new tech TriCaster and applications using NDI. In this next section, we will show how to utilize the Chameleon web and NDI players to integrate with popular streaming solutions, OBS, vMix, Wirecast, and NDI. For this setup, we're using the Chameleon Cloud instance on AWS with the Chameleon Web and NDI players installed in a local workstation PC. So let's get started with setting up a player on the Chameleon Web server. First, we'll go down to the Windows system tray, click Manage. The UI is launched. To create a new player, click File, New Instance, Name the instance. Now define your server by clicking Flow. Enter the coordinates or the URL for the instance that you're planning to use. In this case, it's our AWS instance. Enter the credentials. Click Apply. The connected icon will appear at the bottom. 
So you've successfully connected to the Chameleon Cloud server. Now we're going to click on server. We can define our channel, the show that we want to use, the project, and the rundown. The next step is to define the settings. You want to start the server and the channel on launch. You want to assign a port. In this case, we'll assign port 82. We'll use a secure port connection as well, so 443. And the endpoint for this one, we'll call it uh, the same name as the tab, Vizion. For the project folder, we'll copy the settings from the other show, copy the project folder path, and paste that into your player project folder settings. You also want to assign a remote control. This will allow remote control and triggering from the Chameleon UI. We'll assign a unique port for it. We've set up a project folder, remote control settings, and start the server on launch. The last setting is the server. We want to connect to the Chameleon Cloud instance to show our channel. We'll start the server, and now our server is running. So the next step is to preview our show. Uh, to do that, we go down to the bottom here. You'll see the server running, and you can see the endpoint for the channel that we've defined. So we'll copy that URL. We're going to paste that into a Chrome browser here on the workstation PC. So we now have a web preview in Chrome of the channel that we've defined here. If we want to go back and check the settings for our other two channels, we can click on the corresponding tabs, eSports. We can see it's running. Now that we have our three channels set up, we'll check our other shows as well by copying the endpoint for our eSports, selecting a tab, hitting Enter, pasting the URL in, go to our LRAP program, copy the endpoint for that as well, select the new tab, copy and paste that endpoint in, and now we have the three channels all previewing on separate Chrome tabs. These are our three Chameleon web channels. Now we'll move over to the three streaming desktop applications and show the setup for OBS, vMix, and Wirecast. Let's start with the OBS application uh, known as Open Broadcaster Software. Uh, it is a free uh, cross-platform streaming solution. Uh, it's especially popular with uh, the gaming community. It allows for easy distribution to Twitch, Facebook, or YouTube. Uh, OBS is available for Windows, uh, Linux, and Mac. Uh, it, it has um, a large active community and following. Uh, there's always new features being added in. It uh, has the ability to also do local recordings. Uh, and you can set it up with FFmpeg and a, a variety of other uh, codecs. Uh, so what we're going to do is uh, we've already preset uh, two of the channels. We've got our Bannister LRAP here. Uh, I've actually got the browser set up, and I've got a, a local clip running, or demo reel, as a, as a media source, as a, a background layer. Uh, I've also got uh, eSports here defined as a scene. So we've got uh, two separate layers now. Now I want to add the uh, the traffic cameras, the uh, the Vision. So what I'll do is I'll uh, click on uh, the Add Scene button down here, and this is where we enter in uh, the scene name. So we'll give the uh, scene a name here. We'll call it Vision. We'll click OK. Now once that's defined, um, the scene name is defined. Uh, we have to define a source. So we'll click the plus button here, and what we're going to do is we're going to add the browser as a source. So create new browser three source. Uh, we'll make sure it's visible when we added it. We'll click OK. Now what that does is it brings up a default window for the preview. So in here we're going to put in our channel name, the width, and the height of the uh, of the show. So to grab the uh, the new channel, we'll go back to the player. We'll look on Vision. We'll copy the endpoint, which is uh, down here. Uh, copy the URL, minimize that. We'll paste the URL into the URL window there. Uh, we're gonna. This is full HD, so we're gonna define the width and the height. Uh, we click OK. 
the OBS will do now. It's defined the screen. It will start rendering it. Uh, you can add other layers here if you want and hide them, or we can make that less visible. We want to keep them all on and we can toggle through just by selecting the scenes individually. So now we have our three channels, uh, the LRAP, the eSports, and the Vision, all defined with an OBS. Once you defined all your sources, you can go into settings, you can start streaming uh, to a predefined service like Twitch or Facebook. There's a variety of the uh, streaming services and accounts you can stream to, uh, or you can start recording locally. You can do both streaming and local recording concurrently with OBS. The next application I'd like to talk about is vMix. Uh, vMix is a software switcher for the Windows operating system. It's been developed by Studio Coast in Australia. Uh, it takes in a vari wide variety of sources. It can be baseband, streaming, has the ability to also to stream to uh, Facebook, Twitch, YouTube, a variety of uh, predefined uh, sources, as well as uh, recording clips locally. So I've set up a preset here. I've got some sources associated here. You can see my Bannister LRAP and my eSports. I've got also got a local uh, demo clip here. So I'll open that up. Uh, what vMix will do is load the presets, load the sources, uh, put everything in. Um, now I've already defined uh, the LRAP as a keyable source, and then I've set up demo clip to run as a loop in the uh, center. You can also see down here I've got different sources. So I've got a full screen source here for the, uh, could switch to the um, eSports, and then back to the LRAP. I want to add a new source. So I want to add my Vision traffic cameras. So down in the bottom left here is add input. If you click on add input, it brings up the list of all the input sources. And these can be streaming, they can be PowerPoints. There's a wide variety of sources uh, that vMix supports. What we're interested in is the web browser here. And you can see here that um, you can pick your browser version, but you've also got your predefined uh, URLs and previous uh, Chameleon shows. So I've already, um, it's already uh, saved uh, the Vision. So rather than copying and pasting, I'll just select the Vision show. I'll click OK. It's going to add it in as my fourth source. Now, right now it's off. So it's uh, what it will do is it'll render in the preview and we can see it down the bottom here that it's rendered, it's ready to take. And when we're ready to take it, it's just a matter with VMAX to turn the input on and off. Now, these can be tied to the switcher or trigger it externally, but I'll just, for the purposes of demonstration, I'll just click on it. And if I want to look at the eSports, I can click on that and I just pick that source. Or if I just want to go back to the uh, demo reel and go back to it. That's how you introduce the Chameleon shows into uh, the VMAX platform. The next application uh, I'd like to talk about is uh, Telestream's Wirecast. Wirecast allows users to create live or on-demand broadcasts for the web. I'm going to open up a uh, preset uh, pro Wirecast project I've got here. Uh, so on the side here, you have your layers. Uh, the layers, again, can be any source. I've set up on the side uh, two of the channels. So the LRAP channel, uh, our demo reel, and the eSports. I've got a clear layer here down the bottom. Uh, the plus sign here is where I add uh, in another layer here or another source. So I'll click on that. It provides a list of the inputs, available inputs. So what we're going to be looking for here is on the backgrounds, it says new web page. So we'll click on new web page. We'll add that source in. And in the top here, you have the preferences for the source selected source. So in this case, it's uh, an untitled web page. Uh, we're going to call this uh, Vision, and we'll give that a name. Now, we also have to get the URL. We'll go back to server here. We'll get the player URL, the endpoint. I'll paste that uh, URL in here for the address. Enter the width and the height. So again, this is HD. Uh, there's no other preferences we really have to set up. Uh, we can go back to the other preferences here, but the transition when it comes in. We're not using chroma key. There's no audio associated with this source. The shot layer properties, we'll leave that as a default. And then the shot layer. So we've got this as Vision, and we'll title this as the shot layer is Vision. So once that's done, we've now got the source down the bottom here. 
we'll double click on it. You may want to clear the other layers so we can preview our source. You can manually resize it using the uh, widget here or the uh, scaler. And now that's defined. So if we want that source off, we just clear that layer. Uh, we can add in the eSports, our demo reel, show our LRAP. And that's how the Chameleon web player integrates with Wirecast. So now let's get started with uh, setting up the Chameleon NDI player. We'll go down to my system tray, right click, uh, select manage. This brings up the dialog. Uh, similar to the web player, you have the tabs for the instances and the channels you've set up. Uh, again, I've got my LRAP and my eSports. Uh, you'll notice over here on the right, I have the NDI studio monitor window. And that's so that we can preview uh, the sources that as we generate them, and it'll just give us a confidence preview before we start distributing the NDI to our network. To get started here, we're gonna add in a new instance. We're gonna call this instance, again, Vizion. That's our Vizion channel. And then the first thing we're going to do is set up connection to the cloud server again. We're entering our username and password. We'll apply the setting. And again, we have connected. So we're connected to the cloud instance and we've set up the, the basic channel. Now we're gonna to go to uh, our settings and we're gonna to check to make sure that uh, our project folder path, the server preferences and the NDI stream is set up. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the project path from the other channel. We share the same resources. So we'll put that in. We're also going to select the remote port for this. Now this is going to be slightly different. Uh, the remote control port for this one will be 84. Uh, we're going to start the server on launch. What that means is that uh, when the server uh, and the player launch, uh, it will automatically go out, retrieve the show and the rundown and start playing the channel. Set a unique port number and the endpoint. We'll keep this the same. We'll call this one Vision as well. And we also want the stream to start on launch. So that means that when the player starts, all the Vision and the other two channels will start streaming uh, out NDI. Now we'll go back to the player tab just to confirm everything. Click the start button. So to confirm everything's working on the NDI, we have to go down to stream here. We're gonna make sure our stream settings, the stream name is set. So in this case, we're gonna call this one Vision uh, traffic cameras, we'll give it a little longer name. Uh, we'll change the output format slightly. We're gonna use a 30p in this case. Uh, once the stream is started, you will see connections. The two connections you're seeing here are the key and fill being displayed on the studio monitor window. So we'll go over and check our source list here from the device. So there's our laptop. So our Vizion traffic camera is now a selectable source now that it's started up and I can toggle through and just verify all channels are working. Everything's good to go. We have three NDI sources and we've previewed them on our studio monitor. Now let's move over to the TriCaster. Now let's set up our three NDI channels as sources in the TriCaster. For the purpose of this demonstration, we are using the latest version of TriCaster's Advanced Edition 3. I already have two sources set up. We have the LRAP and the eSports uh, set up as two inputs. We will add the third source by right-clicking in the new source window, selecting the laptop as the NDI source, and then the new NDI source, Vision Traffic Cameras. The LRAP is set up as the downstream key, the eSports and Vision traffic cameras are set up on two separate MEs. And that's how you select your Chameleon NDI sources in TriCaster. We'd like to show you a use case that brings all of these concepts together. A great example is some recent work we have been doing with Global News, a major Canadian broadcaster. They recently launched a streaming 24-7 news service. They launched five channels, four regional and one national, each with an L bar for data-driven content. Each channel required its own specific data made up of regional news, weather, sports to populate the L bars. 
Using Chameleon's API, they were able to pull specific data sets from the overall aggregated feeds and use that data to populate the regional graphics. To make this all possible, Bannister Lake provided Global Television with a suite of software products, Chameleon, the Chameleon Web Player, and the Chameleon Branding Player. Chameleon is used for content aggregation and control, the Chameleon Web Player, which renders the national and localized ticker content for each channel, and the Chameleon Branding Player that displays ads for each channel while generating as run logs for sales reconciliation. The project was especially exciting because it represented an entirely new approach to graphic management. It was more efficient and cost effective to render HTML5 graphics for overlay in streams. Instead of rendering graphics using traditional broadcast graphic engines costing tens of thousands of dollars, rendering is performed by inexpensive Raspberry Pi computers. The media industry is changing very quickly and Bannister Lake is responding to this change. The move towards streaming is accelerating as is the popularity of virtual and cloud-based solutions. We're addressing this growing market with our products such as our web and NDI players for both tickers and elections. We're very excited about the opportunities this opens for traditional broadcasters looking to extend their reach for web-based media organizations and for venues, brands, and anyone online who wants to take advantage of real-time data. You can learn more by visiting our website at BannisterLake.com. Okay, thank you, Darcy. Really uh, important, timely content as streaming becomes more popular and a great look at how Chameleon plays an important role in getting real-time data out to viewers. Uh, we have time for a few questions. Um, there's a couple here. So um, Darcy, with the election, uh, the US elections only a few months away, how can we use your product for putting out an election results stream? Uh, it's very easy, Vern. Um, the, um, the Chameleon solution uh, has a, a number of methods of uh, entering data and you can enter election data manually. Uh, we also support um, uh, DDHQ and AP elections. Uh, you can actually mix and match. You can have AP uh, and, um, and, and uh, DDHQ and, and combine manual results. So it, it's very, very flexible, uh, allows a great de degree of flexibility in, in terms of uh, manual and automated entry of results. Great, yeah, I'm sure there's a lot of uh, people out there who are interested in streaming out election results. So that's, uh, that's a really good question. Um, next question, can you recommend the best workflow to use Chameleon data as part of a Twitch live stream? Yeah, um, so with the applications we just showed, actually all four uh, applications, so OBS, vMix, Wirecast, and the TriCaster, all support um, direct connectivity with Twitch. So you can set up uh, your account, um, and basically when you click the stream button, uh, it will automatically go out to a uh, predefined uh, either live stream or a scheduled event on Twitch. Okay, thanks, Darcy. Um, so I think we're about out of time. So I'd like to thank everybody for joining us today. Um, integration into streaming platforms is just one aspect of the Chameleon product and its ability to be a one-stop, all-encompassing real data, uh, real-time data solution. Real-time data has become an important part of visual storytelling across all platforms. And Chameleon provides a valuable opportunity for media businesses everywhere to get the most out of data feeds and integrate visualized data in new and exciting ways. We will be bringing you additional webinars in the near future, so please watch your email or follow us on social media for more details. And of course, if you have any questions or would like to request a personal demo, please feel free to contact us at info at Thank you for joining us.